Hello and welcome to my chemistry education channel. Kindly subscribe, hit the notification button so that you can be notified once we upload a new video. Hi, I'm teacher Thaddeus Baluka, currently teaching chemistry at Alliance High School. Hi, I'm a distilled chemistry technocrat with a wealth of experience in teaching and examining chemistry for the last 15 years. I am the CEO of Top Notch Educations and other who have authored over 12 books, some of them being the Top Notch Chemistry Books and Demystifying Chemistry Practical Guide and Practical Manual. In our today's video, I'll be unpacking and demystifying the dynamic equilibrium. Welcome. So our topic of interest today is reaction rate and reversible reaction. The subtopic is reversible reaction. So I expect by the end of my lesson today, you should be able to define what is a dynamic equilibrium. You should be able to state the characteristics of dynamic equilibrium. We we'll start by looking at a reversible reaction. Take a piece of firewood and ignite it. It in presence of excess air. It undergoes complete combustion, forming wood hash. Or you can get some pieces of charcoal. You put in a charcoal jiko, then you allow it to undergo combustion. It burns completely. Finally the remnant are the wood ash. The wood ash cannot be converted back to the charcoal. Therefore, we say that is a permanent chemical change. On the same scenario, pick some ice cube from a fridge. Once you remove them from the fridge, the temperatures outside are higher. The ice will melt. If you put the same ice back to the fridge, it freezes and you get back your solid ice again. And that is a, a reversible reaction because you can reverse it. You can convert the solid ice to liquid water by heating, exposing to higher temperature. If you lower the temperature again, the liquid water will now reverse back to get the solid ice. That is a reversible chemical change. A reversible chemical change is a reaction that can proceed on either direction. Like we have said, you can convert ice to liquid water simply by heating or by cooling, you can convert the liquid water to ice. So that is an example of a, that is an example of a reversible chemical change. So we say a, revers a reversible reaction, these are reactions that can proceed on either direction. That is either backward or forward reaction. And as you can see here, we have ammonium bromide, which undergoes a process called the thermal dissociation, whereby once you heat, it dissociates in presence of heat. That's why we are talking about thermal dissociation, not decomposition. So once it dis dissociates, you get ammonia and hydrogen bromide. If you cool the ammonia and hydrogen bromide, you are able to get back your original ammonium bromide. So this is a, a reversible chemical change because it can proceed on either the forward or the backward reactions. Let's look at a dynamic equilibrium. As a reversible reaction proceeds, we reach a state we reach a state of balance a state of balance in a reversible reaction whereby both 
the forward and backward reaction, both forward and backward reaction are taking place at the same time. At the same rate. The key word is same rate. So if both the forward and the backward reaction are taking place at the same rate, we say the reaction has attained a dynamic equilibrium. If both the forward, we have said this is a state of balance. This is a state of balance in a reversible reaction whereby both forward and backward reaction are taking place at the same rate. The rate of forward and backward reaction the same. We say the reaction, the dynamic equilibrium has been attained. In such a state, the amount stroke, the concentration of the substance, or rather the components involved remain the same. So the amount stroke, the concentration of the components that are involved remain constant. From there, you can now get two characteristics of the dynamic equilibrium. That is, at dynamic equilibrium, both forward and backward reaction are occurring at the same rate. And also the concentration of the substances involved remain this constant. So let's look at or uh, as we continue, uh, those are the top notes. I said I'm an order. So if you want to get distilled note, refined note, accurate note with enough questions for practice, uh, you need to get a copy of the top notch uh, workbooks. So I want to explain eh, the, 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 the development how does the dynamic equilibrium, how is it achieved? How do you attain a dynamic equilibrium in a reversible reaction? I want us to start by looking at this ammonia bromine. That is step number one. In this step number one, you find that, sorry. In this step number one, we find we have this, the ammonia bromide. This ammonia bromide, it is starting, when the reaction is starting, we don't have products, we don't have ammonia, we don't have hydrogen bromide. So only the forward reaction, only the forward reaction is proceeding, only the forward reaction. There is no backward reaction, why? Because it is a time zero. At time zero, we don't have products that can recombine to form the reactant. So we only have ammonia bromide. So only the forward reaction is proceeding, but as the reaction continues, as ammonium bromide decomposes to form or uh, to form ammonia and hydrogen bromide, the sum of the ammonia, some of the ammonia and hydrogen bromide will start reacting. And now, as you can be able to see, the, the backward reaction starts to take shape. So it starts to take place slowly by slowly. And remember, at the same time, the, the forward reaction now will start decreasing until it reaches a point whereby now both the forward and backward reaction are occurring at the same rate. You can see it's occurring at the same rate. So that state, we say equilibrium has been attained. Here we have equilibrium here. Equilibrium here has been attained. That's why you're seeing both the forward and backward reaction are occurring at the same rate. This one, we are having the, the Forward reaction being represented by a, a longer half arrow. That means it is the forward reaction faster. And this one is shorter, meaning it's lower. But the point is now reached whereby both the forward and backward reaction remain the same. So that state we say equilibrium has been attained. That is the process of attaining attainment of equilibrium. It is start by only the forward reaction taking place because at the start of the reaction, we don't have any products to react to form the reactants. But as the more of the, pro as the, more of the reactant decomposed to form the products, which is in this case, ammonia and hydrogen bromide, now some of the ammonia and hydrogen bromide start reacting to form the original ammonia bromide. So the backward reaction starts to take shape 
until finally both the forward and backward relation remain the same and we are saying equilibrium has been attained. When the equilibrium has been attained, now you write, we usually, we usually write, we usually write equation for dynamic equilibrium. For a reaction that has a attained dynamic equilibrium, we represent it using the half arrows. The half arrows, not full arrows like this. This shows a reaction which has attained a dynamic equilibrium. So now this half arrows rep now replace this one. We started by writing this. This one shows a dynamic equilibrium in which this one shows a reversible reaction whereby equilibrium cannot be attained. That's why we are using the full arrows. But if equilibrium has been attained, then we use the half arrow. So this one represents a reversible reaction in which equilibrium has been attained. A reversible reaction at equilibrium. This is a reversible reaction, but it's not at equilibrium. Make sure that we are able to capture that. So let me show this. So a chemical reaction for a chemical equation for a reversible reaction in which equilibrium cannot be attained, rather has not been attained, you use the full arrows as I'm showing here. But if the equilibrium has been attained, then you use the half arrows. Make sure that you are able to capture that point clearly. Number two, now we look at what are the conditions that are necessary for equilibrium to be attained. For an equilibrium to be attained, you require a closed system. Equilibrium to be attained, you require a closed system. That is one of the issues. Number two, the characteristics of dynamic equilibrium. The amount stroke the concentration of all the substances involved remain the same. The rate of forward reaction equals the rate of backward reaction. So it is important to understand that if, for instance, if, for instance, you are eating ammonium bromide in an open container, then you cannot attain equilibrium. Why? Because the gas is formed, that is ammonium and hydrogen bromide, they are going to escape. So they'll not be accumulate to be able to recombine to form the original reaction. So that's why we are saying the condition for dynamic equilibrium, the condition for dynamic equilibrium, it must occur in a closed system. And the characteristics of dynamic equilibrium, the amount of the concentration of all the substances involved, the, the amount of the concentration of all the substances involved remain the same, remain the same. The rate of forward, rate of forward reaction the rate of forward the rate of forward equals the rate of backward reaction that's what we mean the rate of forward equals the rate of backward reaction very important for you to be able to capture that so let's try to represent the the the, the equilibrium so if you are now plotting graph of rates if you are plotting, you are graphically are plotting rate against time. Remember what you said. At equilibrium, rate of forward equal rate of backward reaction. So it's important to understand the rate of backward reaction at time zero is also equal to zero. The rate of forward reaction at time zero is also equal to zero. There is no product at the beginning. The only reaction taking place is only the forward reaction. And when I was starting this, remember how we started here. Only forward reaction taking place there. There's no backward reaction as you can be able to see. There is no backward reaction in step one. So in the same scenario, for you to be able to identify, remember the reverse reaction it will start at time zero. The rate will not, there'll be no rate of, but the backward reaction will not take in place at all. 
because there is no product that can recombine to form the original reactants. But the rate of four reaction at the beginning is very high, as you can be able to see, high rate of reaction at the beginning. So this is the forward reaction, and this is the backward reaction. A time whereby the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same, this one now. We call this one, this now the equilibrium has been attained. Equal rate, equilibrium has been attained. So this one whereby the curve flatten, this one shows equilibrium has been attained. Very important. So, so you'll be told this, uh, let me rub this so that you can be able to see. So we have, we have point Y here and we have point X. The point Y is simply the adult to show, to tell us what does point Y represent. Point Y represents that the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same. Time X, this is time. This shows that the time taken to attain equilibrium. X represents the time taken to attain equilibrium and Y represents the, the rate of forward and backward reaction is the same. Very important for you to be able to capture that. Very, very important. Remember, many mistakes that students make that at time zero, when the reaction is starting, the backward reaction is not taking place. There is no product, but the rate of forward reaction is very, very fast. You can also, instead of using rate here, you can use the amount. I remember what you said. What you said, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, when you're plotting against amount, that the amounts to the concentration of the components involved remain the same. So again, the, the, this is the backward reaction. This is now showing the products. So initially, there are no products. So they start at zero. Then they continue. Then they continue increasing. The reactions are reacting to form the product. So the amount of the product will continue increasing until a point reach whereby now the equilibrium has been attained and the, and the what? And the concentration of the reactants now remain the, the same. So for reactants, they'll start being high, but they continue decreasing as the reactants are now being converted to products. So the, the amount of reactants continue decreasing until the equilibrium has been attained, whereby the amount of both the reactor and the product remain the same. They are not changing. So they remain constant. So this flattening shows that equilibrium has been attained. So you can plot against amount against time, or you can plot rate against time. Very important for you to capture that. We have this diagram here. We have this diagram. We are eating calcium carbonate in a closed and in an open container. I remember what we said that equilibrium can only be attained in a closed system. So you are told to write the equations to represent eating calcium carbonate. You need to understand what are the symbols that we use if we are representing a chemical equation in which equilibrium cannot be attained. And the first one is open. So equilibrium cannot be attained there, and therefore the equation for reaction we are going to use full arrows. Yes, it is a reversible reaction, but equilibrium cannot be attained in an open system. So the equation should be written like that. What about that one? This one is a closed system. And this being a reversible reaction, then the equation should be written like that, whereby using the half arrows, showing that equilibrium can be attained. And we have come to the end of our lesson today. We have come to the end of our lesson today. Keep watching. Make sure that you're also able to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can continue getting more videos when they are uploaded. Also comment on the comment section. Tell me what you want me to undo. 
and of course be able to give me any topic that you think they need to uh, I need to demystify. Enjoy your chemistry subject.